Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'll be splitting my time with my colleague, the Member for Nanaimo Ladysmith, which would have been my pleasure. Mr. Speaker, I'm hearing a lot in here from the government side of the House, yet again trying to turn the channel, change the channel, change the channel. Let's forget about what we promised during the election. Let's forget about what we said, promised in the throne speech. Let's talk about something else. Well, this is about a promise that was given. It is about a campaign focus. It's about what was written in the throne speech. And Mr. Speaker, I have heard from my constituents and they want the Prime Minister to live up to that promise. He report, the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, repeated that promise hundreds of times in forums in communities across the nation. And the media, since this change of course, this breaking of the prom promise, have been playing those back to Canadians, clear over and over again. This will be the last first past the post election. This will be the last first past the post election over and over and over like a broken record. So he committed in the last election where he elected his majority government with less than 40% of the vote, that this would be the last election with first past the post. He officially committed that same promise December 2015 in the throne speech and in quotes, to make sure that every vote counts, the government will undertake consultations on electoral reform and will take action to ensure that 2015 will be the last federal election conducted under the first past the post voting system, end of quotes. You couldn't be more definitive if you tried. This was not a promise, this was not an undertaking in a throne speech that we're gonna reach out to Canadians and talk about what do they think about the democratic process. It wasn't an undertaking, well, we'll reach out and maybe we'll think about a couple of things and Maybe we'll replace first past the post and maybe we won't. It was a clear, definitive commitment in the throne speech. He appointed a minister then specifically mandated to deliver this charge. It was common knowledge that to deliver on this promise, the government had to expedite the necessary legislative reforms so that the new voting system could be enacted, debated, and in place before the next election. And the chief electoral officer was very clear about that when the deadline was. Well, the government stalled. And despite calls by the New Democrats to expedite the promised reforms, the committed reforms, finally, in May 8th, in May, eight months into her mandate, the minister struck a committee of members of parliament to, and I say again in quotes, identify and conduct a study of viable alternative voting systems to replace the first past the post system, as well as to examine mandatory voting and online voting and to report by December 1st, end of quotes. So Mr. Speaker, while the committee was originally composed with a majority of Liberal MPs, oh, we're all in this together, but not exactly. In the end, the government caved and agreed to a new Democrat proposal to have the representatives based on votes. So as Fair Vote Canada have said on December 1st of this year, we've tried it. The first example of how the proportional representation system can work is the constitution of the Electoral Reform Committee that was struck to end the first past the post system. And in fact, they worked together very well, they traveled together very well, they heard from lots of experts, they heard from lots of citizens. So there we are, prime example of how when you actually have a fair, proper system of selecting representatives, we get good work done. So why was this important? because how we elect our representatives is a profound decision impacting all voters. So the views of all voters would be considered and reflected in examination of any reforms in addition to this one. The Prime Minister's Minister implored all members of Parliament to reach out to our constituents and discuss how to proceed on this electoral reform to replace first past the post. And we did. Cooperative little members of Parliament we responded to the beck and call of the minister and we went far and right across the country and we held forums and we had surveys and we had 10 percenters and we sought the input of Canadians. This dedicated committee also spent the entire summer break and most of the fall diligently traveling to communities, consulting, listening to experts on alternative electoral voting reforms and summarizing their findings. 
many members of Parliament took it a step further and sought further written feedback. Mr. Speaker, the meeting I held in Edmonton on electoral reform was a standing room only event with close to 300 participants. Hardly an example of lack of interest in reforming the system to replace the first past the post. I then reached out to constituents with a survey and more than 280 took the time to respond in, in depth to our extensive survey on electoral reform. A large majority supported the system where every vote must count. Well, over half called the adoption of a proportional representation system the route they would like to go to. A lot of people said they'd also like to have a referendum, and we have agreed to a referendum, but a referendum on proposals to actually replace first past the post. Another promise broken. Right up until February 1st this year, the Prime Minister and his minister claimed to still be committed to delivering on this promise and commitment. On February 1st, the Prime Minister sent his newest Democratic Reform Minister out to break the news that he had decided to break this commitment. Worse, it was revealed that he had gone further and actually deleted from the mandate for the Minister of Democratic Reform, specifically saying she will not pursue electoral reform. Simply astounding. The Prime Minister now claims that Canadians suddenly don't want electoral reform. I mean, gosh, why'd they come out to all those meetings? Why'd they write those letters? Why did they call for reform? There's no consensus. How does he explain the hundreds who came out to the town halls, the very town halls that his minister called for? How does the Prime Minister explain the hundreds of Canadians who participated in the special committee consultation process? How much did that cost again? How does he explain his broken promise after 80% of the public and 90% of the experts called for proportional representation? How does he explain the hundreds of Canadians who took the time to send written views? Does he really believe that suggests a lack of interest still? How does he explain the over 90,000 Canadians to date signing a petition calling for him to deliver on his promise to electoral reform to end first past the post? The only conclusion Canadians can draw is that because the Prime Minister's preferred reform, that incidentally would ensure a Liberal majority into the future, was not supported by Canadians, so he decided to break his throne speech commitment. There's no other conclusion that anyone can draw. It's well known that many came out to vote specifically and to vote Liberal based on the good faith that the Minister would keep his word that he would end first past the post. So, I, with a little bit of time I have left, Mr. Speaker, how much time do I have left? Two minutes? I would like to share what some Edmontonians have said since this decision was made. Here's a letter to the Edmonton Journal, February 3rd. In quotes, what a betrayal of the 9,093,630, that is 51.8% of voters, who elected no one in the October 2015 election. You must believe that 39% of the votes is a legitimate majority. I guess I'm expected to pay all my taxes, but elect no one. Some democracy. We already see the cynicism building. This is really unfortunate. February 3rd, uh, editorial of the Edmonton Journal. Breaking your signature election promise to, in quotes, make every vote count is bad enough. But for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to announce he was breaking his vow to overhaul how Canadians vote by slipping the announcement into the mandate letter he sent to his new Minister of Democratic Institutions, suddenly a lame duck portfolio, smacks of a cowardly breakup by text message. Mr. Speaker, do the members of the government not understand how Canadians feel about they are now being treated? Where are we supposed to find the continued trust in any of the promises and commitment by this Prime Minister and by this government? We first of all saw the breaking of the promise of providing comparable, equal access to services by First Nation children and families. We'll get to it eventually. Then we see the breaking of this promise, written in black and white. So I'm looking forward, as my colleagues are as well, to an apology for this break of faith. Thank you.